So today I'll be sharing how I became a UX design intern at Amazon. And this is for those who are currently in college and want to try applying to this company as well. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So the first part is definitely applying. When should I apply? What should I apply with? What can I expect? I remember that Amazon has this timeline of recruiting for applicants around, say, early to mid-September all the way to January. So during this time, you can apply directly on their student jobs website or what I did, and this is commonly what I use, is going through LinkedIn and turning on the job search notifications. I noticed they put up their job application around November, December, and I applied say early December. And when I applied, it's a general thing, upload your resume, your portfolio, portfolio website, your works, and past experience. The portfolio is the most important thing that you must concentrate like I think 80 to 90% of your effort on because if your portfolio case studies are not good then everything else becomes secondary since that's the main thing that they're looking for. So what I recommend and what I've seen from past interns like on co-folios is definitely have at least two to three really good case studies on your website in a grid format so it's really easy for the recruiter to look through your works. And with that, how many case studies should I have? I really think you don't need more than two or even three to present, but it's definitely quality over quantity. It's better to have literally one really, really good case study than two to three practice case studies that you didn't really have a chance to dive super deep in. So on my website, I currently only have four projects on there, and these are the projects that I felt most proud of. As you know, the main project that I created, Own It, is the main project that I really focused on, put in a lot of time and energy and thought, and I put that front and center of my website. That and my first internship at Colgate to also show some work experience and how I collaborated on Teams. And as you know, to create this UX case study, I created mine at Springboard UX Bootcamp during my gap year, which I'll put the link down below. But seriously, I think you do not need a lot of case studies. Just create one that is super well thought out and the portfolio presentation during the actual interview will be a breeze. I also recommend for your actual case study website page on your portfolio to make it as concise as possible. Have really beautiful visuals. Try not to keep it text heavy, maybe like three sentences per section of like research and interviews, kind of summarize it. And what's going to happen is now that you have a condensed sort of skimmable case study for the recruiter to think to themselves, I think this person knows what they're talking about. Then you have the opportunity to really explain your whole entire thought process during the interview later on. And I also put up two tutorials on how to create your UX portfolio website on Squarespace, as well as how to write and structure your UX case study up here above for your reference as well. So after applying, you put in your website and everything. It took about, I'd say, a two weeks or so to get an email from Amazon to schedule an interview. So this interview is about two hours long, two rounds, 45 minutes each with a 15 minute break in between. And since I applied say early December, and this is the later half of applicants applying, there weren't too many open slots for me to interview with. So I remember I clicked onto the link they sent me to schedule an interview and they had like two slots open, which was five days after I got the email. So I didn't have that much time to really expect to prepare myself time-wise of making sure I'm really super, super prepared for it. But nonetheless, I think that's just something you should be aware of that you might not have a lot of flexibility in choosing the time since it'll give you uh, predestined time slots to choose from. So moving on to the second phase of the interview, like I mentioned before, there are two rounds. One is the technical portfolio walkthrough and the second round is the behavioral interview. Each round is going to be one-on-one -on -one with a different Amazon UX designer and you're just going to be talking with them uh, solely for your projects and then for the behavioral interview. So for this first round, you have your pick of which two to three case studies you want to present. I made sure to present the one I'm most proud of the most, I guess, innovative project, uh, I'd say, first in my study, just in case I ran out of time. And then the second portfolio case study was one at my internship to show my work experience. But compared to the two, I think whichever project that shows more deeper thought and more, I guess, creative thinking should be prioritized since that would highlight more of your design thinking skills. It's a thing where they ask you, what was your hypothesis on design? What were your design decisions? How did you validate this hypothesis and what did you do about it? 
So questions like that, I would definitely keep in mind. So I remember they gave me full control of the whole interview process, starting with a slight five minute introduction, and then you could go into whichever case studies I want to go through. So I only presented two. I really don't think I could have presented three. Maybe I could have presented one for like 20 minutes, one for 10 minutes, but yeah, I think it was hard for three. So definitely try to aim for two really well thought out ones. And then at the end, you'll be given uh, about five minute Q&A session with the designer. And some things that I would recommend for you to prepare when you're doing this interview is definitely try to write out as many questions and try to like really grill yourself on specific design decisions that you were thinking of. And I remember the designer asking me things such as, after you've done your research, what was your hypothesis of what was going to happen? Did it work out? And what did you do about it? There, there are a, a variety of questions that the designer can ask you. I don't even know like all the questions they could ask, but that's the reason why it's so important to have at least just one really, really good case study where you thought about as many possibilities and variations you can. So in case you do go deep into the nitty gritty details of your project, you know exactly why you created this decision and you decided on this iteration of the design versus that one. And after the first round, the technical portfolio interview, I got a quick 15 minute break went up, got to the bathroom, got some water, and I came back to prepare for round two, that being the behavioral interview. So the behavioral interview is going to be essentially a variety of questions you with another UX designer. I've also noticed this is a very slight thing. I know in UX that we use the term user, but during the interviews, I instead of user, I usually hear the term customer. So tell me about a time you went above and beyond for the customer or tell me about a time you were wrong about a design decision. What happened? What was the decision and what did you do about it? Tell me about a time you were in conflict with the team member. What was the situation and what did you do to resolve it? So a lot of tell me about a time situation questions. So to prepare for this, definitely think about all the previous work experiences that you've done, not even work experience, but design sort of conflicts that you came about with yourself and write them down in a separate like Google Doc or something for you to sort of rehearse in your head. And of course, like the more you just keep it in mind, it's going to come out more naturally when you're talking to the interviewer. Really do not expect yourself to give out perfect answers. They really do want to know since in the real world, things are not always going to be perfect. They really want to know if conflict comes, if you are proven wrong on a design decision, how are you going to overcome these mistakes? How are you going to overcome, say, setbacks? And how are you going to be creative in trying to move forward? With this, definitely try to utilize the Amazon leadership principles. These are principles that they are going to like really drive through you during your internship. So if you really prepare yourself in reading through all the leadership principles, like I remember for my internship, the four main leadership principles that I focused on was customer obsession, dive deep, invent and simplify and think big and really try to list out. Yeah, I really try to think big during this on a case study because I didn't want to limit myself just to the app medium, but I want to explore other possibilities such as a VR or AR in potential solutions, things like that. So in total of questions, I remember getting asked about seven to eight questions. Take your time. If you didn't understand a question, it's totally okay to ask. May you repeat that or give yourself a second and say, yeah, that's a really good question. I'm gonna need a minute to think about that. Pause, it's okay. Think about what you're going to say and then you can say it. I remember I thought I wasn't allowed to like take breaks or pauses or think about it, that I was just supposed to know right off top of my head, but it's okay, seriously, take your time. Try to think of it more as a conversation with the interviewer. They're not there to trip you up or grill you. They're just more asking to see any past experience you have and you just being able to communicate that experience. And afterwards, you'll get the opportunity about five minutes to ask the interviewer any questions. And I remember asking about their experience with work-life balance, about their the amount of meetings they had in a typical day, how many teams they're currently hiring for. So genuinely anything that I was curious about, I didn't put a lot of pressure on myself to have like these super like articulate questions, but genuinely making it feel like a conversation, taking the pressure off. What are you genuinely curious about? And that's how I went through the question phase. So after asking the questions, that was the end of the interview. 
closed off and I was notified that if there is a potential offer or next steps, I'll be emailed in the next coming days. So a couple days went by, I think it was about three days after, I remember getting this email saying that Amazon does not have any potential positions available for you at this time. So just to, in a way, stand by. I felt the email was a little bit ambiguous and literally when I read it, I, I thought that I didn't get the position. It didn't say an offer anything, so I just assumed that I didn't get it. So if this is you and you also get that email, do not worry because two weeks later, I remember I was literally playing ga like video games with my friends and I got this email from Amazon that says, congratulations, offer and close. And I was like actually really shocked because I thought I didn't get the offer. So looking back at it now, if you're also in the same position and you get that email saying there's no current positions available, that means you are actually hired and they just didn't match you just to a specific team yet. And of course, I got really excited because I always wanted to work at a company in Silicon Valley in California. So I went through their student job portal gave out my information, legal stuff, all those good things. So that all happened about two weeks after the initial email and I was able to sign and enclose my official position around first to second week of January. So I hope this gives a good overview of the application process for Amazon. Definitely UX case study is so, so important. Feel free to reference my exact UX portfolio presentation that I presented up here above. I'll also link my UX bootcamp springboard where I created this presentation in the description box for your reference. I also have two tutorials on how to write and structure your UX case study, as well as creating your UX portfolio website on Squarespace for you to reference as well. I hope this covers everything. Again, if there are any gaps or if you need any clarification, do let me know down in the comments so I can chat with you. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.